back at this again. Finally, we'll find time to do this. I haven't been able to find time for this because I've been so busy with actually living life. <coughs> it feels much better to actually go out and do things. But I do have plenty more of these videos planned. I just need to find time to do them because in the afternoon, like the sun will be right there and it'll be in my eyes the whole time. And I can't do that. So, you know, I'm trying to figure out something for that. I think I'm just going to move it the normal uh, to the backyard. Not the back, the front yard, or maybe somewhere else away from here. But I don't know yet. We'll just have to wait and see what I can conjure from my head. But other than that, a lot has been happening as well. I actually got that job at J&J's. That's been officially confirmed. Uh, I just worked last Friday as of this recording and I finally have been able to start looking at banks and decide for the savings account I don't know if I'm gonna go with online banking yet I might just do uh, local banks for now because <laughs> all that matters is I start saving with an interest rate at all and then I can always move all my cash over later anyway. But that's not why you're here. You you don't really care about all that. I'm going to go ahead and get into this video. So, you probably know this situation. You do something that you know is better for you, but might not be as cool. And then you're called weird or told to be normal and I'm here to tell you that normal isn't the best we live in a world where eating fast food is normal where the average person doesn't even work out or have a budget where people would waste their lives away on entertainment sitting on TikTok three four five hours a day and no one would should tell them to think twice about this how is this a good road why should anyone go down this road by their own choice? The truth is, many things are just fine. Many normal things. They're a popular pick for a reason. The gym still has a massive online space. Discipline is preached, albeit not really followed. And people are starting to speak out against terrible dopamine rush things like porn. But millions still re ride the weak wave. From what I can tell, the majority are weak smokers or sugar-consuming adult babies that don't do anything if they think it's not fun. Don't follow what the majority goes with. Unless you want to lead as much of a subpar life as they do, where the most interesting thing that ever happens is what they see online. Oh, look at that. Freaking Mr. Beast just bought massive... One million dollar cars, and he's crushing them under whatever the hell he did it with. Is that what you want to be the most exciting thing that you do? Is what you see, rather than what you do? So, first thing, and this is something I preach a lot. It's, diet is important. What you eat throughout the day decides everything. If you eat terrible food, you'll be and feel less healthy. Your focus goes down, brain fog builds, more things hurt, and you'll drop in performance and everything. I can confirm this. I drop in performance if I have a lot of unnecessary sugar. Like, of course, a little bit doesn't hinder my performance that well, that bad. But that's obvious, because it's a little amount. And as long as I'm still eating a lot of healthy stuff... It mostly cancels out most of the negative effects. But if unhealthy food is mostly what I'm going off of, that's the bigger problem. And I've noticed how terrible it really is. 
like all it takes for me now is to have like eight or nine Oreos and now I'm and then I already start crashing and I get a stomach ache and everything but on the other hand eating good food can make you feel unconquerable I've never felt near as good in any with any diet as when I've been eating proper proper natural meat or chicken and steak Someone who eats steak will be better than someone who's identical to them in every other way who eats pizza. That's not to say you can't have pizza, of course. I'll have a little for the macros, as I've just explained. But for the most part, it's the ingredients, especially things like cooking oil, are sorts of things that you shouldn't ingest in bulk. Eating healthier isn't more expensive. Again, it's more of a matter of how much time you have on your hands, more or rather. Because these things take time to cook and make and whatever. And getting more time on your hands is something that I am also going to go over. But for now, take time to cook real food rather than eating out or, you know, just buying some basic microwave meal. It's healthier, cheaper, and better in every other way. You can cut into a small bit of downtime to make yourself act and feel way better, can't you? I mean, it can't be that much to ask for, for you to take an hour out of your day to prepare the best food that perhaps exists. We're going to do something that's probably going to hit people really hard. Losing people hurts. I can't doubt that. I have entire friend groups that I stopped contacting several years ago, and the sense that I've abandoned them stuck stung a lot up until a few months ago. For three and a half years, it hurt to recognize the fact that I have an entire friend group that I have lost, that I never got back into contact with, simply because I didn't put forth the effort to stay into contact with them. And it hurt for a long time. You know, my mind kept fantasizing about the ways that we would meet back up again and whatnot. But I've confirmed now that that doesn't happen. That's not reality. I was living in a fantasy land, and I had to pull my mind back down to Earth. I will never try to tell you that it'll feel good, specifically for friendship or whatever isn't inherently toxic in the stereotypical sense. But losing friends is normal throughout life, especially as you age. People's paths will diverge. Interests will be lost. Two or more people that thought they had an unbreakable bond, that they would never be yet separated no matter what happens, now go weeks without hanging out together. The people that grew changed. They lost the one or two things that were of common interest in that parrot group. Video games, alcohol, partying, doesn't matter. They, if they lost that one thing, that entire friendship and what it was built on could crumble. And then they have little reason to even stay together anymore. That's typically what happens when relationships break apart. That's the number one cause I've seen of friends drifting away. It's people change. I don't wish this stuff on anyone, anyone ever, but it will happen throughout the entirety of your life, especially if you hope to get better and stay on this path. No, very few people are going to follow you. That's what I've had to deal with as well. Almost no one follows this path. I've gone throughout life and I'm like, wow, most people that end up maturing really start around the age of 15. People that get successful and start maturing start around the age of 15. They start changing their lives around teenagehood. And then they start building up from there. My journey, of course, started with cutting porn out. And then, it, and then I added going to the gym. Well, not going to the gym, but I added working out. And then I added becoming mentally mature, being respectful and responsible. And then I added 
more things like a proper diet. Shoot. I added meditation into that mix. Uh, following God more. Just building all these things on top of each other to make sure that my tower will not crumble as easily as all these friendships do. But you will likely know at least one person you can think of that hasn't really changed since middle or high school. And I doubt you really think you're close with them if, you've, if you yourself have grown in all of those years. People will tell you to stay close to all your friends, no matter what happens. But if both of you hardly contact each other, and you never hang out, then what's the point? I'm all for keeping friends. Don't get me wrong, because it'll only ever get harder as the years go on. As you age, it'll get more and more difficult to keep all these friends. But I won't support a friendship where both sides would be better off without the friendship. If it isn't a regular friendship, you should at least consider that what place that person has in your life. It's likely that the two of you will end up drifting apart anyway, if you don't really hang out much. <clears throat> Just logically speaking, on average, you will not be close friends compatible with 99% of people. That's just how it is. You can tell that that person isn't something that you really want to hang out with regularly because they do drugs or uh, they dye their hair and they're wildly attention-seeking. Whatever it is, there's always going to be something in the majority of people that makes them someone that you don't want to hang out with very often. Get the heartache of saying goodbye off your chest now so that you can move on sooner. There are a lot of people out there that you still have to meet. I didn't mean to cut off go that other one. But go and find your true friends now. I think I have a pretty good idea of who my true friends are at the moment. Whether they will grow alongside me is to be seen. I know for a fact that at least two of them are trying really hard. One of them's already been on the whole self-improvement road for a, while, a long while now. He's been going to the gym since he... He's been working out since he was 11. And he's... Big. He's dense. And I have another friend right now that just started to do jogs every single day. And he's already seen wild improvement. I can tell he enjoys life way more. And... I'm really hyped to see where his road will go, because if he keeps going at the rate he's going right now, jogging over a mile every day, then he is going to be above all my other friends. And he was thought to be one of those people that are like irredeemable or whatever. Which really goes to show, if you are like thought to be in an irredeemable state, you are always redeemable. That is one of the things that is taught in popular religions like Christianity. That's why Christianity is so popular. If you, no matter where you come from and no matter what you've done, you are a redeemable human being and you can always get back. You can always get back what you robbed yourself of earlier in life. It doesn't matter what you did or what you said no matter what, you are redeemable. You can come back from whatever you came out of. It doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter how horrible those actions may be or how morally condemnable those actions are. You can come back. Much the same way that no matter how far down the rabbit hole of unhealthy stuff you go down, no matter if you cross the red line in porn or not, no matter if your diet consists of only sweet things, no matter what, you can bounce back. You can bounce back at any time that you want. That doesn't mean you should stall out because you can just always come back. 
I'm telling you this because you should never feel bad for, or you should feel bad. I'm not going to lie to you. You should feel terrible if you've robbed yourself of several years of your life. But you shouldn't feel like you're irredeemable. You can always bounce back. You can always quit smoking, quit porn, quit alcohol. You can always throw all of that away and stop doing that forever. And you can improve your diet using the things that I have taught you here and what other things people will also teach you. Because I know for a fact that irredeemability is not a thing that people are. No matter how far down people go, they can always be redeemed. That doesn't mean they will be, but they can always be redeemed. I know this for a fact. So, whenever you feel like going down, after you feel like going down the normal rabbit hole is not worth it anymore, which is hopefully right now, then perhaps you are willing to go on this road of self-improvement. You're willing to start giving up parties and hanging out with friends in order to sit down in your room and just think for several hours. Go on a dopamine detox. Do all these things that are that you know are healthy for you, but you're scared to do but you because you think you'll be condemned. I will leave off on one final note. Throughout all of this, throughout the whole being normal thing, throughout thinking that you need to be normal in all of these aspects of life, ask yourself one simple question. Who? Are you done? Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'll cut that out. Oh, maybe I won't. I don't know. Throughout all of this, throughout acting normal, through everything you have done, you have to ask yourself this one question. Who cares? Other than you, who cares where you end up in life? There... There's a... Entrepreneur, he's a businessman, his name is Alex Hermosi, and he has a really good way of thinking about death. Three generations after you die, no one will remember you. I have to be frank with that, no one will think about you every day, a hundred years after your passing. There will not be a single soul on this planet that will have you on your mind constantly, no matter how far you made it, you specifically will not be on any one person's mind forever, ever after again. A hundred years after you have passed on, three generations after you have been buried, you will not be remembered. So why do you care about what other people think of you? Why care about what other people tell you is normal? Why care about the fact that this friend of yours is complaining that you don't game with them anymore? Or you don't go out anymore? They don't care about where you're ending up in life. They care because you're not fun anymore. You don't do what they think is fun. That is what I'm going through right now. I'm doing what's best. I'm doing what's going to keep my friendships intact without damaging myself again. Because I don't want to be someone that games for several hours on end anymore. I'll do it here and there because it can be a fun little thing. But I think after I graduate, I don't think it'll be a thing I really ever do outside of this. Like, you know, for YouTube. Because I've realized that these people that have been trying... Anyone that'll try and get me back into that again. Whether 
they try to, whether they realize what they're doing or not, they don't do it because they care where I end up. They do it because they want me to be fun again. In the stereotypical sense. But I don't want to be fun. I want to be successful. And live life as I see fit. Again, carving your own path. Carve your own path. Follow your own set of rules. Stop listening to what other people have to say about you. They don't care about you. They care about what they see in you. They want to be able to justify their own actions and their own shortcomings by making you have those same shortcomings. If they want you to start gaming more, that is because they're they're afraid of the shortcomings that have been starting to show themselves recently of them wasting their lives on the virtual world. They do not in a single they do not even comprehend what it does to your life because they don't care. That can be your friends, that can be just random people that you meet that can even be your close partner. Doesn't matter. Do not follow the road of fun and what other people tell you to do. Follow the road of what you want to do. What you want to do with your life. Do you want to become successful? Then start budgeting. It's not cool. No, it never will be cool. Because that means that you can't make on-the-fly purchases without you know, checking what your budget is first. People think it's embarrassing or that it's tedious or monotonous to look through your phone or through a spreadsheet and check out what you have left in your food area of your budget. But if you constantly make on-the-fly purchases and you get into debt and you always follow after what people will tell you is fun rather than what you actually need, you won't be successful. That is what most people fall down under. That is the category that most people will fall under. They think eating out is something that they should do. Even though there's no real benefit to it either which way. The only benefit that is gained when you eat out is that the food tastes good and that uh, there might be a social aspect to it. But the food tasting good, that can be eliminated because Tons of people, tons of people, tons of food tastes great. And this can be eliminated because you can find people that don't feel the need to eat out all the time. So just go off of your own path. If you ever start going towards something that you know isn't as healthy as going a different way, start thinking, am I doing this for me? Or am I doing this because someone else tells me that it's fun? Take care, and hopefully I will see you sooner on one of these, rather than later.